Okay, so, two tracks are down and we still have three to go. And as of which, the three tracks we have left over are Swiss Alps, Tahiti Maze and Autumn Ring. And then once we've done all of those, we get to do the reverse variants. So, let's head back over to the course license and now head over to course number three, Swiss Alps. And where the car we are driving is the Toyota RSC rally car. And in terms of our target times, well, we need a 1 minute 37 minimum time to pass, which is essentially a bronze, a 1 minute 30 for a silver, and a 1 minute 24 for a gold. Of course, to those of you who have been watching my channel for over a year, obviously, I always tend to go for the gold. But yeah, let's do this. And see how terrible we are for a first attempt. Or how terrible I predict us to be for a first attempt. So just doing my short shifting technique, which I think is the best way for me to get around this circuit. At least for me to build up enough speed on the straights in certain areas. And heading now down into the final two hairpins. Got to keep it tight on that first entry and then hopefully you'll get a good enough entry heading through the second apex and onto the front stretch and got a gold by over 1.1 seconds or with over 1.1 seconds to spare I should say but yeah there we go somehow an easy gold and the only reason for that is because I kept the car intact and I also had the short shifting technique. But yeah, anyways. Still, has to be said, that was a beautiful lap. Oh, yeah, just let me overwrite this. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just going to delete this. You didn't see it. And I'm just going to put this one in its place. Still, 1 minute 22.8. That is a beautiful lap. Anyways, prize car time. So for... Achieving the bronze... We get... A Lotus Elise. And for achieving the gold, we get... Is this a Honda Integra? got a feeling it is. It is a Honda Integra. Except for saying it's the race car edition. Or the dream car edition, if you will, as they would call it in this game. But yes! Two cars down and still two to go. So... Let's move on to the normal difficulty. And unfortunately, we cannot use any concept cars because none of them are applicable to dirt tires. And I think to start this off, I'm going to head over to new cars. And the machine I'm going to use is officially the Subaru Impreza Pro Drive. And the car we're up against is an Evo 7. 
So, let's just go out there and sweep this bitch. Because I would imagine this is going to be piss easy. This roast, I would say, is probably going to be just about as easy. Yeah, I'm trying to think of an example of what's very easy, but yeah. I'm trying to think. This will basically be about as easy as saying yes to a dairy milk bar. Yeah, that's about the uh, that's about the best example I can really get, unless you have chocolate allergies, of course. And to those of you who do, of course, live in the UK, you probably know very well what it is I'm on about when I say a dairy milk bar, because, well, obviously, Cadbury is based here. Well, realistically, it's based in Wales, but... It does also have a factory in Birmingham that I've been to. Ironically speaking of how I have travelled locally. But yeah, that's about the soonest example, that's about the best example I can think of. Or about as easy as guessing the flag of Switzerland. Because essentially, the only thing the flag of Switzerland really is, is basically, you know, just a red background with basically a cross in the middle. That's all the flag of Switzerland really is. And it's very easy to identify. Yeah, somehow the car just decided to understeer on me, even though I wasn't. Even though I wasn't even pushing it particularly hard, but somehow the car just decided to understeer and over rotate somehow, just so it could basically prove that I have no control over this thing, even if I'm driving slowly. But, anyways, back up into the lead once again by sheer easiness in spite of the spin and somehow it's still good enough for a new personal bust and a win by 1.7 seconds because I spun I think I probably spun twice in this race unless it was only once well, it was probably only once but you know what I mean Anyways, got the gold cup, and now we move onwards to race number two. And the car we win for this is... Is this a Ford Focus RS? I am correct, it is a Ford Focus RS. Even though I'm pretty sure we already have one of these available. But, yeah, whatever. I'll take what I can get. Plus, furthermore, this is definitely a car I'll be driving before this game is done. I can guarantee you I will be driving this thing. Anyways, one down, two to go. And, might as well keep this super based so... The next one I'm going to use is the 99 Subaru Impreza Rally Car. And I think as far as I know, this model was driven by Richard Burns, if I'm not mistaken. 
Although I couldn't tell you who the other drivers were, but I know Richard Burns was the lead driver for Subaru in 99. And we are going up against a Ford Escort. I have no idea who the driver was at the time driving the Escort, but all I know is the Ford Escort easily one of my favourite rally cars of all time. Well that of course, besides this, the Lancia Delta Integrale Evolution or basically just the Lancia Delta Integrale if you want and the Ford RS200 at least in terms of regarding what my favourite rally cars are overall. But yeah, the Ford Escort is definitely on my list of top 5 rally cars. The Ford Escort Cosworth, of course, not the uh, RS1800 that won the championship in... Uh, God, what year was it? 79? Yeah, 1979. I think was the year the Escort won the championship, even though that was technically the 1800, but... Well, you know what I mean. Anyways. A four second advantage now over the Escort. Easily pulling away as I would have expected. And continuing to pull away as I now have a 6 second interval to the Ford Escort. And that's a wall. I know it's meant to be protection tape, but again, somehow it's still a wall. Also, by the way, that's a fence. If you will. And a 7.4 second advantage now, so... Steadily pulling away now from the Escort, and... I'm pretty sure this will end up being an easy win. Even if I do spin up to this point. I'm pretty sure it will end up being an easy win, as I now have a 10 second interval, so I could probably get away with a spin if I really wanted to, if I really wanted to, as long as I can get back on the throttle. And I somehow beat the lap time I set during the time trial because I just set a 122.6. Also, my entries on this run into that second corner have just been beautiful. At least into the right-hander, they've just been beautiful. I've literally just not been going wrong in terms of the entry to that one corner on this run. And the Escort is proving to be no match for the almighty Subaru. Even though obviously this was not the one Colin McRae drove to the WRC in. It was after that model, if I'm not mistaken. because Richard Burns effectively became the second WRC champion for Subaru and then I think the third one, if I'm not mistaken, was Petter Solberg. Anyways, I win. And I just obliterated the previous lap time I set. That's probably about as good as I can get to a perfect run. And I finished it in about 4 minutes and 13 seconds. And the margin of victory? 20.7 seconds. 
That is just how much quicker I was compared to the Escort. Also how much more consistent I was than the Escort on those runs. That is amazing. Anyways, getting the trophy. And... That should officially do it for the uh, prize cars after this. And what do we win this time? We win... A Pontiac Solstice. Also, I'm pretty sure this is the only Pontiac in this game. Also, fun fact... Pontiac made their GT appearance in this game. I'm pretty sure they did. Anyways... That's all of the prize cars, and now... We need to get on with the Ace Race. Because... For the purpose of achieving true perfection. And here we are. Let's get in the updated Impressor Rally car. And I think this was the same one Richard Burns won the championship in, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, I know his main rival for the championship that year was Colin McRae. And our opponent is... an Evo 7. A Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 7. And, oddly enough, this thing also has the correct number plate, although I would assume that's probably because licensing was more, you know, what's the word? Licensing for these minute details was probably more, what's the word? Acquirable? Yeah, acquirable compared to GT3, because they weren't necessarily able to get all of the perfect detailing. But yeah, it has to be said, this thing actually looks pretty good with the license plate on the rear. I think it actually makes it look like a resemblance. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, it is also cool to know they did manage to put in the numbering details as well as a couple of other things to, you know, replicate the model. I couldn't tell you which model this is, but I'm pretty sure it's a replica of one of the models that did drive in the 2001 WRC because this game was launched in two... because this game was launched in early 2002. Well, to be completely honest, I would say the epitome of this game is basically the number of cars in this game that actually featured in both the Tokyo and Geneva motor shows respectively. And that's the fence. Anyways, three seconds now to the Evo 7. I am slowly pulling away as I would have anticipated. Figured it would be appropriate for me to include both the uh, road and rally variants of the uh, Subaru Impreza for these runs. Because, to be completely honest, this is an easy ride. I know it's not something you would hear me say very often, but... Overall, Swiss Alps in this game has proven to be very easy compared to what I've been up against in the two previous segments. 
because I definitely had some challenges in those. Even though my time trial runs, you know, in the course licenses, still stands at a perfect record because I've basically managed to achieve a gold on all of those on my first try, if that makes any sense. And yes, by the way, because we are now in 2022, or 2022 I should say, this game is basically 20 years old. And that is much faster than the lap time I set with the Toyota RSC. Although I probably wouldn't mind driving that thing again before this game is done. I mean, I'm definitely going to be driving the Focus before this game is done, because... Because, to be completely honest, I absolutely love the Ford Focus RS. It's probably the one particular model of Focus I love even more than the models driven by Colin McRae. Considering he was technically, you know, part of the Ford camp at the time of when the Focus was introduced. And what happened to the Evo 7? Did he hit the inside wall or something? It looked as though he was parked for a second there. Couldn't really tell you what that was about though. But I'm pretty sure he was parked for a moment there. He must have hit the wall or something. And not going to improve on my personal best, but still set a low 122 to cap off the race, and also to capping off the Swiss Alps. 5 minutes and 34 seconds. And in the end I won by 15 and a half seconds over the Evo 7. The only word I can really think of for this is domination. <sighs> I yawn. Alrighty then. So. That is now the Swiss Alps done. And next time we shall be heading over to Tahiti Maze. So, let's now save our progress. Alright, next.